Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video I want to show you all the lights we have available inside the A320 cockpit, what we use them for and a couple of standard lighting configurations used during a normal flight. We're going to start in no particular order going top to bottom, so let's start right on the back over here. And the topmost lights we have is the two reading lights located in the back over here. Now those illuminate the areas around the jump seat and they originate from the time where we didn't have fancy EFBs and stuff but they are provided so that the crew members on the jump seat, if any, can read up what you have in the FCOM and therefore provide assistance to the pilots themselves. Now. In a more practical case, they are also pretty useful if you've got a crew member on the jump seat and when you are about to have your meals. Now, that is probably the primary purpose of those lights nowadays. So moving a little bit further to the front, next up we've got the internal lighting panel up here. Now, most obviously we have the dome light, which has two particular positions. You have the dim position and then you also have the bright position. Now, the dome light is normally used when you're on the ground and doing your pre-flight or post-flight work so that the flight deck is illuminated to a nice level, but some pilots also use it in flight when you just want to avoid falling asleep as it makes it a little bit easier to stay awake. Now, the dim position comes in pretty useful in those situations because it means that the cockpit is illuminated to a certain degree but your eyes don't just adjust to the total brightness that you have inside the flight deck when you turn them to the bright position. So normally you want your eyes to keep it or to stay adjusted to the lower lighting condition so that you can see something outside. With the dome light off, during night flights you are normally able to see, you know, something outside with the dome light on. The windows quickly turn to a black hole, making it rather difficult to see anything. Now to the right of the dome light we've got the annunciator lights. Now the test position well tests the lights but that is normally used by maintenance only and not by pilots. At least on the Airbus family. On Boeing it's different but on Airbus normally the test position is not used. That leaves you with a bright position and a dim position. Now in the simulator those positions actually don't do too much. This is bright and this is dim. In the real world however they make a huge difference. In the real world, during low light conditions like right now, during the early morning hours and especially during night, turning them to bright is really gonna create some very, very bright lights that are easily going to blind you and hurt in the eye. For that reason, as soon as the sun is setting, we would switch the annunciator over to the dim position and that is what we would use. Now the next light is the standby indicator and Step, or the ice indicator and standby compass lights. Turning these ones on has two functions. On one side you have the ice indicator probe located out here and if you are flying at night this is basically just a black hole, you don't see anything. For this reason that light is provided so that you can light the probe up and be able to tell if there is ice accumulating on it a little bit quicker. The other function of that switch is to provide backlighting for the standby compass, as you can see over here. Now, the standby compass is normally just in the stowed away position and not really used unless you really need it. So, by default that switch is left in the off position unless you want to check for eyes on the probe outside your flight deck. So, next up we have the overhead intake light and those basically control the backlighting of the overhead panel and normally during daylight they are just kept in the off position or in the complete on position. It doesn't really make a difference during daylight, you can't really tell. But at night normally something about the middle position is used over here. I do find those lights to be a little bit bright in the Phoenix Airbus, so I would recommend something a little bit more over here. So something about this level of brightness that we have right now is what's normally used during nighttime operation. The idea behind this is once again that if you don't turn them very bright, your eyes stay adjusted to the outside brightness a little bit better 
and that is not only more healthy for the eye if you don't have larger differences but it is also enabling you to see a little bit better when you're looking outside the flight deck. Now moving further down next up we have the glare shield and there is several lights located over here. We're going to start with the backlighting of the glare shield panel as that is basically the very same that we had on the intact lights on the overhead. The switch is located down here just above the top left edge of your ecam, and you can turn it left or right. To the right of it, just over here, there is another switch that controls the brightness of the indication on the FCU and your Q&H on the EFIS control panel. So you can turn it all the way left or you can turn it all the way right. Normally we keep it somewhere over here so that it is not too bright at night so that it once again doesn't blind you. During daylight we normally turn it all the way up even though I have to admit that turning it all the way up in the Phoenix is quite a bit brighter than it is in the real one. In the real one I'd expect something around this level of brightness so that is what I normally use in my simulation. If we go further to the left then we have another two sets of switches. One located on the captain's side just down here and one on the first officer's side just over here. Now this is the backlighting for your table. So when we have the table out, we need to do some paperwork on it, then turning this one up is going to nicely illuminate the area around the table and the front panel as well. Now, you normally only use this when you are doing something on the table. Personally, I use it when I'm eating or when doing paperwork on here. I do have to add though, that when I say I use it, I use the A330 equivalent, which is slightly different. A330 has a light mounted in the top over here that's shining down onto the table so that it doesn't illuminate the um, aft side of the panel. Now, the first officer, of course, has the same thing fitted on his side. Going further left, then, we've got the map light located up here, and there is an on off switch attached to it. And this basically illuminates the area where the EFB is fitted by default. But you can see if I'm removing the EFB, it basically illuminates the area where you would normally have your charts clipped back in the day when the A320 family was constructed. You can turn it on and off using the switch over here and you can control the brightness using that selector over here. In the day and age of electronic flight bags, we basically don't use that at all anymore, but we simply use the electronic flight bag, which has its own lighting, of course. Now moving a little bit further down, next up we have the console and floor light and that one has two different settings, bright and dim. So this is what the dim position looks like, this is what the bright position looks like and this not only illuminates the area on the side over here but also illuminates the floor area down here to a certain degree. Now that light is particularly useful if you want to grab anything from your flight bag during a night flight without turning on the entire dome light of the aircraft and even if you do turn the dome lights on you're still gonna cast some shadows as the dome light is located right up here and therefore going and therefore if you bend over here to grab something off your flight back you are going to cause some shadows so, so this is where the console and floor light comes in really handy likewise it is really handy if you are searching for something that you dropped somewhere on the panel over here or that you have in any of those um, storages over here. So that's this one. Normally it's kept off during the flight. On you only turn it on when you're actually actively searching for something during uh, nighttime conditions. So if we're moving further to the front, then of course we have the dimmers of our display. So we've got the PFD, the ND, which is split into two, and then you've got the ECAM down here. Now, the level of brightness of the screens in the real aircraft is a little bit less than it is on the Phoenix. On the Phoenix, if you turn this all the way up, you get this. And that is, to be honest, quite a bit too much. So, in the real world, I normally turn the displays all the way up during daylight and during nighttime turn them somewhere down. But on the Phoenix, in order to achieve the same level of brightness, you can see just about where I turned those lights over here and in the real world that setting or that level of brightness would more be something over here on the say about two o'clock position. Now on the ND switches you have two switches located on one panel. 
and these, the large one controls the brightness of the terrain or the weather overlay, while the small one controls the brightness of the displays. Now, normally the overlay is turned all the way completely bright, while the display itself is turned to a similar setting as the primary flight display. The same applies to your two ECAM displays, so do keep them at a similar level as well. And the standby instrument as well, you can control that brightness using the plus and minus knobs on the side over here. So going further down then, we have another three switches down here on our pedestal. And we're gonna start with the index lights for the main panel and the PD, the pedestal, and that basically is the very same as it was on the overhead panel already, or on the um, glare shield panel. So just put them to a decent level where you can see all the lines well, but where you don't blind yourself by turning them up too bright. Next to that is the main panel floodlight, and that's the panel locating or controlling these lights over here, you've got four of those floodlights fitted over here, here, and then the same over here and over here. Now, the main panel floodlight is something that different pilots have a lot of different opinions on. Personally, I'm a fan of using those because I do like to see somewhat of the plane in front of myself, especially when flying at night with the dome light turned off, otherwise you're just staring into that black hole down here. And personally, I'm a huge fan of having those lights enabled. However, some colleagues don't like them at all and therefore just turn them off the entire time. Now, the use of those basically depends on your personal taste, but when you are using them, use them at a level of brightness where they are not too bright. We normally don't turn them up all the way, but we normally keep them in a setting like this, where we are just about able to see the panel behind, but don't blind ourselves through the uh, brightness of those lights. Next up we have the um, floodlight for the pedestal, and that floodlight basically controls this. Now, most colleagues do keep it off for the majority of time, but sometimes you just turn them on very slightly, especially if you are not using the dome light, so that you ha can see a little bit of what's um, going on down here, and that you can uh, see stuff that you might have put down over here, which you're normally not supposed to do, but you know how that stuff works. Likewise, the floodlight down here is rather useful if your printer is printing something and you just want to see what that is before actually ripping it off. And that is the general light that we have available in the cockpit. Now let's go ahead and have a look at a couple of standard configurations over here. And for this I am going to set my simulator all the way to night conditions right now. So. This is the normal setting you would have when you are flying the aircraft. So right now we are just looking at backlighting on, the rest is dark, and this really enables the best possible view outside as your eyes are going to be able to adjust to the darkness in the best possible way. You would also use this configuration when you're taxiing the aircraft. However, I have to add that in the simulator things do become very, very dark. In the real world things don't get all that dark. In the real world you are usually able to see the contours of everything going on due to the light emitting from the displays. And of course the lighting of the airport in case you're on the ground. For that reason in the sim I do like to keep my dome light on the low position, even though that is a little bit too bright really. But that is kind of the best compromise you can have. Now, some colleagues, as mentioned, do like to turn the floodlights on, but if you do that, really keep them at a low light level, something like this, so that you are able to see what's in front there, but don't create a negative effect of your eyes' adjustment to the darkness. Now, when you're standing at the gate, you would keep the dome light all the way in the bright position, and basically have your lights configured like this. In flight, I do kind of like the low position, but as mentioned, that really depends on each different pilot. Alright, last but not least, there is the uh, lighting configuration when you're flying nearby thunderstorms, and that is basically everything to maximum. 
The idea behind this is that your eyes are adjusted to as bright of a lighting level as you can possibly achieve. Now, what is that good for? Well, in case you do get a lightning strike, you are not going to be temporarily, or permanently, in the worst case, blinded. Now, something that the A330 has that the A320 family unfortunately does not have is a switch that just turns everything to completely bright. And, well, that is something that I do really appreciate in the A330. The 320 doesn't have it, unfortunately, but um, that would be really useful under those conditions. So I do hope that you enjoyed this little tour around the lights of the A320 flight deck. As always, be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're up for more. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.